Changes in your diet not only affect you physically, uh, physiologically inside, but also mentally, how well you think, psychologically, how well you feel. But you'll never know just how good you can feel until you put it to the test and try eating healthier. Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. Today I'm on my treadmill answering a wide variety of your questions, everything from the versatility of purple sweet potato powder to the benefits of a fermented soy food called natto, and the best way to manage menopause symptoms. First off, Himmy asks, would you recommend using purple, oh, purple sweet potato powder to mix with the orange or the white ones when you can't find purple sweet Oh, that's a, what a cool idea. Um, yeah, if your purple sweet potato powder is just has one ingredient, purple sweet potato, fantastic. I mean, you don't have to mix it with orange or white. You can mix it in a smoothie. You can, in fact, in my uh, upcoming book, How Not to Age, out in December 2023, I have a recipe for Okinawan smoothie, which is based on purple sweet potatoes. But yeah, if you didn't have purple sweet potatoes, people, purple sweet potatoes, you can add purple sweet potato powder. You could add it to oatmeal or add it to anything. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Um, super. So has all the wonderful stuff the sweet potatoes have, plus those, those berry anthocyanins, um, which are so important for um, brain health and all sorts of other things. And so, yeah, that's great. I didn't even know such a thing existed, but I'm totally going to look into it. Cool. All right, next up, Ammo asks, I was put on medication that caused me to gain weight. Uh, oh my God, not just gain weight almost double your weight, uh, managed to lose weight by changing medication, sticking to plant-based diet, but okay. Any advice? Um, I'm so sorry to hear that, and I'm glad that you've uh, changed course. So I wrote an entire book just for you, How Not to Diet. Um, all the proceeds from all my books are all done to the charity, so go to your local public library and get How Not to Diet um, on uh, in hardcover or audiobook or ebook. Um, and it talks about it says you're already, it looks like you're already um, eating healthy, but then there's all sorts of things you can add on to a healthy diet to accelerate the loss of body fat because we want to get you back down to where you were before. So, so glad to, um, to, uh, to be able to help. Next up. Okay. Llewellyn says cholesterol is high, um, even though they've cut out the meat, eggs, and dairy, and trying to watch what they eat it needs to be on a statin. What else is out there that is better than drugs? Okay, so there's all sorts of things. Uh, so um, the first step uh, is to get rid of foods that increase your cholesterol. And so there's three food components that increase cholesterol, and that's uh, saturated fat, trans fats, and dietary cholesterol. So you've already eliminated, um, uh, uh, well, you've eliminated dietary cholesterol um, by eating vegan. But there are still plant sources of saturated fat, like coconut oil, palm corn oil, palm oil, found a lot of vegan junk food. Um, so you'd want to stay away from that. Um, and then trans fats have um, been largely removed from the U.S. food supply. But if you're in a, you know, uh, if this question is coming from another country where they still have this partially hydrogenated oils, um, that would be something to stay away from as well. And usually just by doing that will bring your cholesterol down. So average cholesterol of people eating vegan, it's about average total cholesterol is about 140. Um, we want to get it below kind of 150. Um, if your doctor is talking to you about statins, your, your cholesterol is probably way above that. Um, so unless you're just doing a lot of coconut oil or something, then the next step would be to add foods to your diet that actively pull cholesterol from your body. And so that was the thinking behind Dr. David Jenkins' portfolio diet out of the University of Toronto. Um, where the, he came up with a portfolio of different foods that remove, that pull cholesterol from your body using different mechanisms and so have kind of this additive effect. And so, you know, once, you know, so part of the portfolio of eating a lot of soluble fiber-rich foods, slimy foods like oatmeal, okra, eggplant, et cetera, um, nuts and seeds, all sorts of things to pull your cholesterol down. And so then you've uh, eliminated foods that increase your cholesterol, added foods that actually draw down your cholesterol, and the portfolio diet should be working well as these first-generation statins. Um, and uh, if it's not, then you really uh, should start looking for secondary causes of hypercholesterolemia. So, for example, underactive thyroid gland can jack your cholesterol up, even if you're eating really healthy. Um, excess abdominal adiposity. There's a whole bunch of things you can 
you'd actually look at um, before um, before going to pharmacological options. Okay, Yogi says, does long pepper increase absorption of turmeric like black pepper? Oh, such a cool question. Okay, so long pepper. What's long pepper? Papali. So it's uh, it's in the same black pepper family, but it has um, it may have senolytic properties, um, uh, which is one of the aging pathways. So I talk about um, adding long pepper to one's diet. Um, and uh, that's one of the recommendations in my upcoming book, How Not to Age, something I've done in my own diet. Um, and the question is, does it increase absorption of turmeric? I don't think so. Well, does it have piperine? That's a good question. So I believe what's, um, what's increasing absorption of, it's not so much the absorption of turmeric, it's the suppression of the detoxification of curcumin. So basically there's something in black pepper that suppresses your liver's detox enzymes, which normally would um, detoxify this curcumin, which is like, what is this in the body? Um, which is the bright yellow pigment in turmeric. And so when you suppress your liver's ability to remove it, you get higher levels in your bloodstream by like, you know, 2000%. Um, uh, and so, so I think it's the piperine, which is kind of the, the, uh, the, the spicy compound in black pepper. Long pepper has a different flavor. It has a more kind of a numbing sej white Szechuan pepper kind of flavor. So, um, it may not have piperine, and if it doesn't, I would not expect it to have the same um, impact on your liver that would increase the bioavailability of the compound in turmeric. Okay, next question. Bit Finesse says, uh, whoa, on a diet, three pounds of greens. That's a lot of greens. Greens are really light. So three pounds of greens, a massive amount of greens. Two pounds of sweet potatoes. Ooh, that sounds like you're making me hungry. Some berries during the evening. One to four percent fat. Whoa, that's extraordinarily low fat diet. I mean, Okinawa is only like nine percent fat, and uh, although, yeah, so it's about ten percent is probably ten to fifteen percent is probably normal for the human species, but that's extraordinarily low. But I ate one third of a pound of mixed nuts, allergies, face blew up into a child, giant cold sore. Um, okay, so if you're eating that many mixed nuts, obviously, you're diet's not that low in fat unless you were low in fat and then all of a sudden ate nuts and then you had a cold sore so cold sores i mean presumably is 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 around the lips you think of cold sore as opposed to your face um cold sores can be uh triggered by sun um by a bunch of different things um but not by nuts as far as i'm concerned it's caused by virus um, uh, herpes virus one. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, I, um, I would diversify your diet. Um, uh, you're hitting a few on the daily dozen, but there's a lot of others you should hit, including nuts, but, um, uh, no reason to eat a third of a pound an ounce or a little less than an ounce a day is perfectly fine. Sorry about your cold sore. There are some things you can do about your cold sore. Um, uh, there's not great data about lysine. Uh, that's it's, it's a supplement that's touted as being anti-cold sores. Um, but what does work is um, antiviral drugs. So um, valacyclovir and acyclovir, um, uh, even just a day, like two doses, uh, can work as well as longer courses. Um, and the earlier, the better. So you could, if you get cold sores, you can have it on your person. Uh, so you can get a prescription for it and have it. And then as soon as you feel the tingle or whatever, you know you're going to get one, you can take it. And it reduces uh, uh, it reduces uh, the duration by about a day. Um, and then if you keep getting recurrent cold sores, then you can be on kind of a prophylactic dose of something like valacyclovir, like 500 milligrams a day. Um, so that's often used for like herpes 2 infection, like trying to uh, suppress um, genital herpes outbreaks, but can also suppress some um, cold sores as well. But hopefully you can find ways like, you know, sunblock or something, if, if the sun is one of the triggers, um, that means you don't have to be on drugs your whole life. Fuchsia asks, a menopause and high LDL 90 days ago. Oh, wonderful. Husband and I started a whole food plant-based journey. His numbers Oh my God, wonderful, gorgeous, so 238 to 102. But uh, my LDL only works 20 points. So, well, hey, 20 points, that's amazing. 
Um, well, I guess it depends on how high your LDL was, but that's pretty good. Um, uh, just stick with it and it should continue to come down. Um, uh, and so that's fantastic. I mean, just like, look, some people can eat crappy foods and their cholesterol doesn't go up as much as other people. Um, and they're just kind of lucky that way. Um, and so, uh, difference in genetics can offer a difference in impact of, uh, diet and lifestyle choices. And so it's not that, uh, you know, there's different diets for different people with different genetics, but it's the, the you know, some people exercise is healthier than other people. Um, uh, some people smoking is worse than for other people. You know, they have this predisposition for lung cancer. Um, and that, the uh, you know, the tobacco, they're just waiting for those first few mutations from, uh, from the cigarette smoke. And so, um, so it, uh, if you're eating the same kind of food, then it may be just be genetic differences, but you're moving in the right direction. That's the important thing. Stick with it. Um, and, uh, and, uh, if you don't come down to target, then, uh, you know, start thinking about some of these other things I talked about with portfolio diet. It's also sort of the things that lower cholesterol too, like black cumin. And I, if you just type in cholesterol into nutrition facts or all sorts of stuff will come up. AMLA is also lowers cholesterol with dried Indian gooseberry powder. So all sorts of supplements that can do it as well. Okay. Scott says, can I exercise while doing 18, six intermittent fasting? Absolutely. You can exercise. In fact, if um, if you're doing intermittent fasting to lose weight, um, to maintain muscle mass um, on any kind of caloric restriction, exercise is critically important. Um, uh, obviously, if you're dizzy or lightheaded, you want to be careful. Um, but uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that kind of intermittent fasting, if you do it, if you do it right, meaning that it's early. Um, uh, meaning that you eat earlier in the day and, you know, stop eating like in that case, you know, before three o'clock, you can get tremendous metabolic benefits. Um, I profile this study, uh, in my time restricted feeding, uh, video, and I keep looking at it. And every time I read about it, cause I talked about it in my how not to age, cause I have a whole caloric restriction chapter, um, in the how not to age. Um, every time I see that study, I'm just like baffled by uh, how uh, powerful that is. So early time restricted feeding, uh, you know, skipping supper, trying to shove as many calories in the morning as possible and stopping eating um, early. Even if you're eating the same foods um, can have uh, remarkably different effects thanks to our circadian rhythms and exercise would be a great uh, benefit to that. If you can do it, that's great. Okay, uh, Nels, Nels Nels says, I changed my mind on fluoride what are my recommendations? Um, uh, so I gave a webinar recently talking about um, uh, community fluoridation and uh, new data um, out of Canada, which has got a lot of people concerned about um, fluoride in the water as a, as a neurodevelopmental, a neurotoxicant. Um, and so pregnant women um, may want to uh, try to avoid um, excess fluoride intake. Um, but, um, that's separate from topical fluoride, um, uh, which, um, can give you the benefits of drinking fluoride without the risks. And so, um, I encourage people to stick with, uh, fluoride containing toothpaste. Um, but, uh, but, um, uh, for, um, but, uh, for pregnant women to, um, not be, ingesting more fluoride than is um that you can get away with um and this is not just me this is next uh, national toxicology um uh, uh program uh, has come out um with numerous dress statements uh, reviewed by the national academy of sciences etc cetera, etc cetera. um so it's really kind of going the way of 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 uh, kind of similar to what we were kind of in the early 80s with lead um, where we see a significant de detriment in IQ in uh, child, mom-child pairs with greater exposure to uh, community fluoridation. Okay, Remco says, is natto good for your health? And if so, what my benefits might it be? Um, so natto is a slimy fermented soy food. Um, uh, well, it's not so good for you. Well, I mean, 
Yeah, and that it's a it's a slimy fermented soy food. Um, I I think uh, people think of natto, they think of a particular form of vitamin K. Um, it's not necessary to get um, a natto vitamin K. Your body can make that kind of vitamin K from the greens that we eat. So we eat dark green leafy vegetables and get all the vitamin K. I would eat natto if you like eating natto. Otherwise, um, probably the healthiest soy food is probably tempeh. Um, uh, which has lots of ergothionine and spermidine and uh, all sorts of beneficial things, or edamame, another whole soy food. Um, uh, yeah, those are probably the um, healthiest sources of soy. Um, is Stephanie says, nutritional yeast safe to consume? Have heard of some type of issue with formation that harms the body and should not be consumed. Nutritional yeast is safe to consume, except if you have hydradenitis separativa, which is this nasty autoimmune disease or another autoimmune disease called Crohn's disease, uh, which is a type of inflammatory bowel. I have uh, videos on both of those and why nutritional yeast is not good for them, but good for everybody else. Okay, Gabriella, um, what, is my, is, what is my advice about managing menopause symptoms? Oh boy, well, that is a huge part of my um, book, How Not to Age, uh, my Preserving Your Hormones chapter. Um, and, uh, so it depends on which menopausal symptoms you're talking about. Um, in terms of weight gain, I would probably go to my, how not to diet book. Um, uh, but in terms of, uh, kind of, uh, these vasoactive symptoms like hot flashes and flushes and, um, uh, uh, night sweats, that kind of thing. Um, there are a bunch of options and soy foods are one of the uh, ways that you can, uh, it's probably the first line treatment for treating. Um, symptoms then there are um, uh, kind of gendourinary symptoms of menopause, um, uh, which used to be um, kind of have different names, but um, uh, that that can be treated with uh, non pharmacologically with uh, vaginal lubricants and moisturizers, and I talk about the bene the, the best brands, um, and then there are hormonal, both pre prescription and non prescription. Um, a, a local hormonal applications and different things you can eat. And so on down the list, but there's lots of things you can do. Uh, check out the new book at your local public library when it hits it out this December. Okay. Wild blueberry. What a name. There we go. Wild blueberry asked if I had my blood, I had wild blueberries today. If I have my blood checked, what values would I, should I pay particular attention to in order to find out whether I'm eating a balanced diet? Should I test for certain? The USPSTF, the kind of preventive, preventive services gui um, guidelines committee, really suggests just uh, getting your cholesterol checks. No reason to check for vitamins and minerals in particular, unless you have particularly symptomatic or eat kind of, or have kind of a strange diet where we would assume that you'd be off kilter in some way. Um, so it's better just eating a healthy diet and remaining healthy um, and then obviously if you're under problem you can check for specific things unfortunately i'm out of time um but thank you so much and i'll talk to you again soon we would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition go to nutritionfacts.org testimonials we may be able to share it on social media to help inspire others if you'd like to see any of the graphs, charts, graphics, images, or studies mentioned here, go to the Nutrition Facts Podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. My last two books were How to Survive a Pandemic and my How Not to Diet cookbook. Get ready this year for the launch of How Not to Age. And of course, all the proceeds for the sales of all my books goes directly to charity. NutritionFacts.org is a nonprofit science-based public service where you can sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research with bite-sized videos and articles uploaded nearly every day. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, no kickbacks. It's strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition.